Hi friends, I am Professor Prabhakar V. Varde and this is a course on risk-based engineering and today's lecture we are devoting to level 1 fire probabilistic risk assessment. Uh, this is a course sponsored by uh, NPTEL and uh, uh, the PRA methodology or probabilistic risk assessment methodology uh, even though it has become a uh, way of life in uh, safety critical system like uh, uh, nuclear plant, process industry to some extent, uh, space system, but uh, most of the industrial areas are uh, left out. So, uh, uh, level 1 uh, PRA or pro fire PRA uh, is uh, really helpful in identifying, prioritizing the resources and of course uh, uh, having a track of uh, uh, risk from various sources and how it can be re reduced and how investment can be uh, can be made in an optimized manner so that we address the 20% uh, risk component uh, uh, where the risk is coming from and uh, uh, remaining things we can we can take uh, uh, as the call or as the resources permit so this is a very uh, useful procedure for uh, fire risk assessment um, uh, introduction uh, we introduce uh, the fire risk assessment um, is something uh, in line with what we do uh, our uh, normal probabilistic risk assessment for full power operation except that uh, it has got some specific uh, specific uh, uh, requirements like uh, uh, dividing the whole plant into uh, fire compartments and then uh, estimating the fire load which we do for even other systems also and then try to see uh, how the fire initiating events uh, they are emanating and uh, what are the consequences uh, if our safety system or uh, protection system if they are not maintained uh, properly and even, uh, the PRA even it provides uh, the way uh, for assessing uh, the uh, readiness of our uh, safety provisions also. So, it is really a uh, good thing. Uh, the bottom line is uh, this methodology is based on a quantitative approach. Uh, most of the fire uh, management procedures uh, they are based on qualitative approach where there is uh, subjectivity and uh, they are uh, the so they do not work actually as effectively as uh, uh, quantitative method works for uh, fire PRA. So and uh, if we compare uh, in any industry especially uh, uh, my reference is uh, uh, nuclear industry. So the fire uh, PSA contribution to core damage has been shown to be of order of 10 to the power minus 6 to 10 to the power minus 8 you can understand the kind of readiness that is being maintained in uh, in uh, uh, nuclear sector. Uh, so, uh, then we have the um, uh, uh, initiating event modeling uh, you require and for that you have to have uh, the fire modeling requirements uh, then you have to have into account which are the, in fact on uh, uh, even on judgment basis also uh, you can work out ki which areas they might contribute more uh, or they may contribute less. Uh, fire load is one of the direct mechanism which is there. Then high energy systems where they are located like diesel generator pumps and things like that. So, there are some uh, yardstick but then uh, since a quanti uh, quantified ecosystem is available uh, as part uh, as a fire PRM uh, system, uh, we can use this system and we can do a more effective uh, work. So, now, now what are the major fire uh, modules? Uh, first is a plant workdown. Uh, when the systems are co complex and they are uh, they are uh, distributed and uh, uh, and then they, they are sort of you know either mission critical or safety critical then in that case a walkdown uh, of the system provides a real a good sense of uh, what are the what are the uh, safety culture they are being uh, used and how far uh, the event can take place and some some of the things are very uh, very superficial they can be even pointed out uh, at the uh, even even at look so if, what i'm trying to say is at the walkdown level itself these thing these events can be addressed now depending on the assessment identification of fire compartments are made and then estimation of fire load is the next module we are, that we have here and then accident sequence quantification. Now, you, accident sequence quantification is the same as what we have in um, uh, traditional 
or conventional uh, PRA module uh, that is identify the initiating event, uh, then, uh, then uh, uh, the, uh, induct uh, the safety systems and see how event propagates. Okay or how, uh, uh, what are the uh, provisions that exist and they do not allow uh, propagation of fire. Okay? And then uh, finally, inventory quantification, as I said, quantification is one of the uh, strength of this thing and result postulation. From the result, the first insight will be, you will be able to locate the areas which need immediate attention or uh, uh, number one. Number two, which are the immediate resources and uh, that, that to be uh, implemented in the plant. And then what kind of uh, uh, human factor uh, or training kind of things that are required that can be. So, uh, it is a very, very efficient and effective uh, framework uh, which provides uh, for fire PRA. Now, um, uh, I have been uh, I have been insisting upon or I have been talking about what are the rational which goes in favor of a quantitative approach like uh, probabilistic risk assessment for fire. So if I see the traditional uh, uh, traditional approaches uh, here we have uh, these are the uh, this is what uh, traditional or normal procedures are there and this is risk based procedures is there and that is quantified approach. So if even if I take initiating event. Uh, initiating events in in, uh, in a traditional approach uh, is a qualitative uh, expression but while when we talk about the uh, the uh, risk based approach or uh, quantitative based approach a quantified estimates of risk the what what it does is it tells you that what is the likelihood or or, or, or you know um, if i say uh, this uh, in a particular area the fire event frequency is uh, point to 10 to the power minus 2 and in other area, if we say uh, uh, 2 into 10 to the power minus 4, definitely we say in other area it is highly unlikely. While else in one area uh, it is 10 to the power minus 2, 1 in 100. So it requires more attention. Similarly, uh, every fire, uh, um, fire, uh, uh, any uh, industrial setup, uh, they have fire protection system. So uh, instead of having a qualitative notion, notion that yes, pump will come and operate and all, we can estimate the system availability, uh, uh, whether it will be uh, it will be available during fire extinguishing uh, exercises. So that uh, we estimates we can have, and when we do periodic testing, we can really confirm this data. Okay, and then the assumptions are like uh, in fire uh, in the traditional methods, uh, loss loss of function or a, a qualitative expression it remains. But in quantitative um, uh, approach, uh, we have risk both to a likelihood. We will be able to say likelihood of this event is this, and consequences will be this much because we have so many fire system provisions or consequences will not be there. So that will give again the risk component from the uh, particular area. Uh, now or even from the plant when we integrate or uh, um, you know all event together. Then component state, we say either uh, uh, fail or success. But here the best estimate rates can be given because it has quantified number one. Number two, uh, the quantitative method has got one way out to uh, have quantification in terms of uh, like the fuzzy logic. So, fuzzy logic can convert the uh, linguistic uh, linguistic uh, expression into quantified estimates because uh, it gives importance uh, of the uh, you know um, of the event and it estimates. So, it can be sometimes uh, considered for probabilistic modeling also. Uh, though it is not probabilistic, but uh, it, it is it gives expression in terms of quantified figures. So even fuzzy information can be used. Then uh, we, in uh, normal industrial setup, the common cause failure has got a meaning. Of course, there is a good and robust mechanism exists for uh, uh, defense in depth. Uh, you know what are the defense separation? Uh, you know all this thing to be provided uh, to reduce the common cause failures or different material, different resources, different vendors. Or uh, so you know so uh, having this, but this advantage is available here. Here on the top of this, the advantage available here is what is the chances of co common cause failure and what are the root sources whether they can be addressed and model in a quantified manner. So that uh, there are three common causes. Which one is more important? So we can say okay. Uh, a is having a um, higher uh, frequency, so this is this has to be addressed first, second one, and prioritize. They can be prioritized. Human error uh, for emergency scenarios, uh, we only anticipate that human will do certain action. 
But in uh, uh, quantitative methods, uh, there are stress factors. Uh, there are the given the given the controls or given the setup in the areas and all, uh, we can see uh, whether the job will be done uh, with ease or uh, stress factor will be so much that it, it will not be done only uh, since we provided some provision, we were expecting them that operator will handle it. But here the detailed modeling of uh, human factor is also there in uh, fire PRA. So this is the advantage and let us see what are the major steps involved in fire PRA. I, I think you will see a mix of uh, reference PRA uh, for full power and uh, we have discussed uh, flood PSA, some part of it like, uh, compart like uh, compartments, modules and all that. So the, it starts like first is data collection uh, and data collection for fire PRA PR start from walk down uh, to uh, ha having uh, a, a detailed uh, expression of like fire loads. Uh, then it could be area specific characteristic and uh, then uh, potential from equipments uh, which are there. So these are the part of the, and then identification of fire compartment. Now having collected the data, now the plants have to, have to be uh, divided into compartment. And then, so, uh, so obviously wherever fire loads are there or where uh, chances of fire, fires are there, those areas they will become uh, highly prioritized area actually. Then identification of uh, system structures and component uh, for fire detection. So we have to have what are the protection measures, uh, measures. so we have to identify those fire protection measures which are there. It could be. Um, fire, water, it could be various uh, carbon dioxide cylinder, if it is a nuclear fire, it could be um, unsul powder or you know graphite powder or uh, and then finally we come to when we have a stock of data and uh, our model, then we do qu qualitative screening because for all the compartment or all the uh, system it cannot be done. It is a very uh, resource consuming procedure. So qualitative screening is done and once uh, something, some events which are not important have been screened out, we go for quantitative screening. So there is a robust uh, basis for this, why we are screening out this thing and then estimates of fire loads. So once uh, we, we are zeroed down to some compartments, uh, uh, important component, components uh, uh, from the fire point of view, then estimates of fire load it goes on and what are the provision existing in the area based on that fire accident sequence analysis is carried out and finally results of uh, fire PRA. So this, uh, this step by step procedure is uh, self explanatory in that sense and it is easier to implement also. Now fire load calculations, how, how we do fire load calculations, uh, different, uh, different component or material they have their own fire load capacity. Uh, PVC will have uh, kilo, so many kilocalories of fire load and uh, uh, then uh, if we talk about uh, any other metal, metal fire has got its own uh, this thing. So metal fire always uh, is always related with the uh, hydrogen uh, this thing and all and then um, uh, so fire load calculations are done based on the list, standard list available in the, we don't have to um, bother about that, on the standard fire uh, safety documents, they provide the fire load list. The, then what we have to do is we have to identify the quantity of fire loads like uh, suppose if I am doing for a diesel generator room, uh, the fire PRA, uh, then I have to say uh, the cable, power cables which are there, what are the fire loads. Then, uh, then in the diesel room, uh, we have this uh, lubricating oil, uh, this is a source of fire, then, uh, then the fuel oil, it can be a source of fire. And even the, uh, the color painted on the wall, that can also be a source of fire. Other than that, that, many housekeeping things are kept. So housekeeping is very important from fire load point of view. Uh, the experience suggests that uh, when we do a walk down, the uh, recommendation should be generated uh, so that uh, the walk down itself reduces the fire load in the area and a revised calculation can be done. Uh, then what uh, was done uh, is part of the walk down exercise. And then we have um, uh, various circuit. Um, uh, I think short circuit has been uh, whether it is an industrial uh, uh, ecosystem or it is um, it is a you know a public uh, areas. The uh, short circuit has been found to be one of the source, uh, and this short circuit is an initiating event. Later on, the fire loads they dictate. Uh, 
uh, how this uh, event are going to expire, uh, uh, spread and if there are some fire provisions uh, like we have this uh, fire extinguisher, we have the fire injection lines uh, and then uh, many powders and all that. So then it will be like you know uh, consequences can be uh, determined and one of the um, um, one of the fire source uh, can be uh, hydrogen cylinder. Hydrogen uh, is uh, one of the uh, one of the gas. Uh, when it comes in contact beyond certain uh, concentration, then it becomes a fire potential thing. If it comes in contact with any uh, initiator source, uh, it becomes a source of hazard actually. Okay, so I was discussing about the fire load estimation. Uh, here is the radio open sheet. An example. Uh, this example has to be spread uh, for all the components all the area so that we can have estimate of fire load available with us. So it is a fire load distribution for a diesel, DG means diesel generator room. So uh, we, we, we got here uh, the plant uh, diesel generator 200 kilowatt rating. It is kept, we have assumed for simplicity it has been kept in a room and uh, the power cables, uh, this Pilska is uh, paper insulated, uh, lead covered. Uh, armored wire. So, because every cable will have its own capacity and its own fire load. So, uh, but uh, please uh, uh, note that whatever number I have indicated, uh, they are not basically drawn from for specific reasons. They have not been drawn, and they are just they are, they are just to um, uh, mean to uh, demonstrate the procedure or illustrate the procedure. So, let's say quantity we have taken this. Uh, and the calorific value for this uh, P, uh, uh, cable PVC thing and all uh, is 6200 kilo calorie and then the heat load calculations are done here and then the fire load per square meter is, uh, is uh, uh, amount we get around uh, uh, 126,000. Uh, uh, 6 uh, 35. Similarly, alternator generator, they have insulation. Uh, so, I have considered class A insulation and then quantity 1, uh, then uh, kilo calorie load. Uh, these are all assumed value. Uh, when we do a real fire uh, analysis, then we, uh, when we take, uh, then we take these figures from some reference or some uh, safety document. Heat load calculation, it is uh, here and then finally, we have total fire load calculation. I, I think the, the uh, calculation is not complete, it has to come in something like in thousands or you know like legs. So, uh, this is what it is here and then lubricating oil tank, uh, then grade of oil uh, and then uh, so similarly uh, fuel, uh, fuel tank the procedure remains same and we have the total fire load. In fire PRA, this is one of the biggest job uh, we have uh, when, when we do the fire PRA because this gives a intensity of the source or you know potential consequences from the source um, uh, in the in a compartment and that will dictate um, uh, given the uh, given the uh, various safety measures which are there and the likelihood of uh, likelihood of a given consequence actually so uh, after having seen that now we we have organized this whole uh, whole thing into uh, the compartment so this compartment number 1 to n and we have this 1 2 3 4 5 6 and all and then we have uh, uh, as i mentioned you plants generally can broadly can be divided into full power operation ap means full power operation and uh, lpsd uh, low power and shutdown psa so these this is the matrix compartment and operational state matrix and accordingly we will estimate the uh, frequency uh, or likelihood and the fire cdf is given total of all uh, all these things actually you know uh, because for every uh, uh, event there is a consequence and this metric and then let's say contribution from uh, lpsd uh, we have over here it will be uh, j j is varying from uh, 2 to n that means because normal power uh, normal power full power we have already accounted so it starts from 2 to uh, addition up to m and fij that means um, uh, jm uh, ij and we can estimate fire CDF. Uh, so here we have for full power, where which is not the scope of this presentation, a year power uh, uh, for fire event uh, from shutdown condition. Because we are operating extension of uh, full power to, uh, to uh, full scope uh, from limited scope to full, full scope. So that's how it is. It doesn't matter. The procedure remains same. You identify the objective function plant operation state, compartment and you can do fire event analysis for full power, low power, whatever. Procedure is going to remain same, only sources or potential of fire um, might change, um, couple of events uh, will be uh, 
uh, more or less uh, in full power or vice versa, depending on uh, it is a <coughs> shutdown PSA. So uh, having seen this, again we are repeating the statement that um, uh, fire core damage frequency is that, that means uh, when we do PRA, uh, we have to estimate how much fire is contributing in the overall core damage frequency. So this is the, so I is equal to 1 to N, that is compartment, uh, summation of uh, all the compartment over uh, uh, different uh, fire consequences that you plant operating states and then we have FIJ and it is simple formulation and here we see contribution of fire into um, uh, uh, and what is uh, multiplied by the probability and we will get the fire contribution to net CD, uh, CDF. So contribution from fire to core damage frequency. Okay. So with this um, as far as the tre treatment is co concerned the fire uh, PR fire uh, analysis is carried out at three levels. The first level or first tire is called a conservative approach. It is something like collecting information on fire sources and then um, uh, using some uh, uh, tool like uh, fire dynamic uh, tools and uh, then use uh, uh, and then finally the result will be conservative and approximate approach because it was not as elaborate as uh, uh, level 2 or level 3. In level 2 what happens? We will take the realistic figure. Uh, normally this type of analysis are done during construction stage or you know uh, when uh, when we start the fire and we are, we are told that uh, in a short time we have to submit a report. So this does at least it does 50% uh, or 70% of the time uh, uh, purpose it serves actually you know. But then finally we have to get down when the uh, uh, things are commissioned and uh, they start operating then second level uh, tire PRA. This is more realistic and less conservative. Why? Because here we are using relatively more complex tools. We are using fine tuning management. We are, uh, we are taking contribution from human error either uh, for aggravating or for, um, uh, for ensuring higher level of safety. Okay? And then uh, uh, compartments and all uh, are the analysis is done in more detail compared to level 1 analysis. And finally, we get to get to uh, third level or third tire. Now, this is largely characterized by zone models, fire, the level provides realistic estimates and scenario. So, uh, why we are able to do all these things in a more realistic manner? Because we are using advanced computer codes or CFD codes uh, to assess the fire potential and fire propagation from one area to uh, other area or in the, in the area itself and how uh, the, uh, we also ensure the capability of our fire protection measures and uh, how far they will be able to meet the requirement uh, th those things are also done. So uh, it is and I think layer three, uh, third tire it, 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 if I have to take uh, PR, fire PRA it is basically one stage ahead of that because it provides integrated statement of area. Uh, then uh, uh, zone and then the plant itself. So uh, uh, the fire PRA is uh, uh, given uh, uh, along with this tool can provide a superior estimate uh, of the uh, fire risk. Uh, now uh, we have quickly reviewed, reviewed fire PRA. Uh, we have discussed the uh, major procedural uh, steps. Uh, what are the different plant operating states? Here we divided the plant for simplicity into two. Uh, that is uh, a plant operating FP full power and then we'll know in shutdown state we have taken around uh, 12 to 13 uh, uh, areas. Now it has become, it has become a, uh, a requirement that I simplify the model and present here. In actual condition the models are more complex, their interconnections, uh, their, uh, their exchanges, their modes, uh, there are many. So uh, but then uh, if somebody uh, is interested in doing fire PRA, this information is uh, more than sufficient. Then compartment creation, fire core damage uh, quantification and contribution of fire to net core damage probability. So with this, um, we come to an end of the fire probabilistic risk assessment uh, methodology.